Hey everybody, it's Pastor Randy with Impact Community Church, and I want to take this time to invite you to our Easter service this year. We'll be celebrating the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. There is no Sunday like Easter Sunday. It'll be a great day for the entire family. The Lord has given me a special message this year, NIL. And through the resurrection of Jesus, He has given us permission to use His NIL his name, his image, and his likeness. What a blessing that is. Service starts at 10.30 a.m. Please come early, grab a cup of coffee and a donut. You can even take a family portrait at our photo booth before service. So don't forget, Easter Sunday this year is March 31st, which is the last Sunday in March. We look forward to seeing you Easter Sunday. While we're standing, while we're standing, we'll just bow our heads for a quick word of prayer. Father, we thank you for just being in the building. God, we thank you for what we have experienced so far today. Spirit of the living God, we invite you into this place to have your way in here today, God. We thank you for the anointing of God that's strong in this place today. We thank you for the favor of God today, God. As we go into the scriptures this morning today, God, help us to understand context and help us to understand history. Help us to understand your word today, God, so that we might rightly divide the word of God this morning today, God. We just thank you today that as the word penetrates traits the hearts and minds of those who are here today, causing increase in their lives today, Lord. We make an open declaration that we will no longer be the same today, God. We thank you that you sit high and you look low today, God. We thank you that you still are in the midst of a busy world, in the midst of a sinful world. We are still the light that sits on the hill today, God. We thank you for fresh oil this morning today. We thank you for fresh anointing today, God. We thank you for a fresh mind today, God. We ask today, God, that we throw ourselves on the altar and you make us better today, God. God, we just thank you for all you're doing in the lives of your people. And we call it done in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen. The Bible says this in Luke chapter five, or Luke chapter 11, verse five. It says, and he said unto them, which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine in his, in, in his journey has come to me and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not, the door is now shut and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needeth. And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to him that ask him? Before you take your seats this morning, just turn to your neighbor to your right and left and say, just ask. Turn to someone behind you and say, just ask. 
talk to your own spirit and say, just as. The Bible says, for all those who ask, they shall see. All those that seek, you will find. And all those that knock, the door will be open. All you have to do is ask. You may take your seats this morning. I'm going to talk to you just maybe about 30 minutes. Amen. That way y'all will still love me. Hallelujah. You know, before there was anything, there was God. And we serve a God who stepped out of nothing and made everything. And when I think about the scripture and how God had uh, asked Moses to write the first five books of the Bible and God is downloading to Moses the things that he wants Moses to write because it's evident that Moses was not there. Because the Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, it says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And what I like are the first four words, in the beginning, God. So if you are asking, where did he come from? And you ask all of the, the why questions, what, when, where, why, we don't know all of that. All we know is that in the beginning, it was God. He came from, we don't know, but we know that when scripture is written, he's there. What I love about God is that he created everything, but he didn't need anything to create everything. When God created the heavens, he didn't go by the metal store, he didn't go by the lumber yard, he, he just spoke it and it was there. Back in the day, people would say, well, God is my co-pilot. I, I just wanna help you this morning that God is not the assistant pilot, he's not the co-pilot. In fact, he's not just your pilot, he, he owns the plane. Right, and so he owns the plane, and when the plane is flying during the, the daytime and it goes by the sun, he owns the sun. If the plane flies at night and it goes by the stars, he owns the stars. When the, the plane goes up and it comes down and it goes through the clouds, he owns the clouds. God owns everything. Before the world was, there was God, and God said, I'm going to stop, I'm going to step out of eternity, and I'm going to create time. That way, you'll be able to know the days and the weeks and the seasons, and you'll be able to say, God did this for me on this particular day. But God doesn't need time. The, the Bible says that a day with the Lord is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as this one day, and God looks at things non-linear. We look at things linear. We see one thing, one thing, one thing, but God has this perspective where he sees all things at the same time. God is omnipresent. He could be everywhere at the same time. We see that in Scripture. We see that God is everywhere at the same time, but then we also see Moses have an encounter with God at a burning bush. So we would say God is there, but then God is everywhere. He's omnipotent. He has all power. He's omniscient. He has all knowledge. He has all power, all knowledge, and he's everywhere at the same time. And so I'm humbled before him because with all of his greatness, he still decided to make man to have a relationship with him. And for the purpose of where we're going this morning, he's a great God. He's a great father, and we have the ability to ask him. The God who has no lack, he tells us to ask. The God who owns a cattle of a thousand hills, all he asks us to do is just ask. The light bill is not unpaid in heaven. God is not running out of resources in heaven. The Bible says that the streets up there are paved with gold and, and the gates have pearls on them. And, and so God has more than enough for whatever your problem is. All he wants you to do is ask. 
And the Bible says this in Luke chapter 11, verse 9. It says, and I say unto you, ask. Ask comes from the Greek word ateo, and it means to ask, to beg, to call for, to crave, or desire. It means to request or to make a petition or a demand to God. God is not upset when you ask. In fact, God tells you, I want you to ask. Like any good parent, they want you to ask. Is this making sense? God says you have to ask me. You're like, "Well, well, he can read my mind. Yes, he can. But he don't want you to do this mental telepathy with him. He he wants you to ask. Y'all don't want to talk to me this morning. Ask him for what you want. Ask him for what you desire. Ask him what you should do. Ask him about your attitude. Oh, ask him about the decisions that you are making. Ask him about your needs. We have a lot of things that we need to have fixed in our life, and he is the one who has all of the answers to our problems. But he says, I just need you to ask me for it. Sometimes, the Lord dropped this in my heart. He says, sometimes we do everything but ask. We talk about it. We gossip about it. We post about it. We make a reel about it. We create online surveys about it, but we never But we don't ask about it. And sometimes when we pray, we still don't ask. Maybe we think he won't do it for us. And if it goes against his word, he's not going to do what you want him to do when you want him to do it. Maybe think, we think he's run out of resources. Maybe we think that he's lost his job. I'm here to tell you that God is still the creator. He's still the sustainer. He's the original equalizer. Y'all don't want to talk to me. He says vengeance is his. See, you don't have to spend your time wondering how you're going to take exact revenge on somebody. God says just love them and and just ask me about it. If you ask him, he's got more than enough strength. He controls everybody's lives. And somehow all things will work for your good. Amen. Amen. Maybe we think heaven has forgotten about us. Maybe that's why we don't ask. Like God is broke. God's not broke. If you ask God to let me hold a dollar, God, y'all, I, I come, this, that's culture, that's culture. I had uncles who were older than me, but I had more money than them, and they would always come up, hey, nephew, nephew, let me... Let me hold a, a dollar. And in, in, in my culture, that means loan me some money. That means loan me some money. And actually, in my family, it means give me some money because if you loan them some money, it's, it's not. It's, uh, can I get a witness in here? Uh, are y'all related to me? Are y'all related to me? So, because some people are like, ask, hold a dollar. What is hold a dollar means like I need some money. Amen. <laughs> Why are you not asking? Amen. The Bible says God knows the very hairs on our head. That's scripture. And even though God knows the very hairs on your head, he still tells you to ask. God says, I know the desires you have of even before you ask. But he still says, I want you to to ask because there's something special about going to God, realizing I don't have the answer to my problems. I need some help, and I'm going to, in some cases, the only person who can help me. It's good for your humility to have to go to God and ask. But it's also good for your testimony that when you go to God, the Bible says that we present ourselves boldly before the throne of God. We know that he answers us, but you've got to ask. Amen. Some of you have missed out because you haven't asked. Some people have been in the room with people who were there because God put them in the room and you still didn't ask. 
You hinted around it. You kind of talked a little bit about it. And then when you didn't get the response that you thought you were going to get, because maybe they didn't show the interest that you thought they were going to show, so then you never really asked. Some of us treat God like, like we treat our spouses, like, like, well, I just thought you knew. I thought that if you saw me cook dinner, then I thought you knew that it was you, you should be washing the dishes. And your great husband will say, but you didn't ask me. And then great wives will say, but for the sake of Scripture this morning, that's not the right response. That's not the right response. I didn't think I had to ask you. I got an amen coming from my left. I got an amen coming from my left. God says, you still, even though I know everything about you, I know where you're going to be tomorrow, next week, I know which job you're going to have, I know how many kids you're going to have, I know how many spouses you're going to have, you still got to ask. Don't hate God, that's just his system. Don't hate the player. Because some of us are like me, like, if you know everything, then why do I still have to ask? When I was a kid and it was time for me to go to school, I would hate to ask my daddy for lunch money. But I never got lunch money unless I would go through my mama to ask my daddy for lunch money. And my mom was a stay-home, uh, she was a stay-home mom, so her, 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 her money was limited. And sometimes she would go through the couch cushions, she'd go through the ashtrays trying to get me some lunch money. And finally she would say, you need to go and ask your daddy. I'm like, <laughs> but my daddy always gave me. Now it would come with a lecture. <laughs> you know, because if you're 17 still asking for lunch money, it's going to come with a lecture. But every time I asked for a fish, he didn't give me a serpent. When I asked for an egg, he didn't give me a scorpion. The Bible says us being fathers that aren't the best, we still know how to give good gifts to our kids. How much more so our heavenly father. Amen. Say just ask. Do you know some of you could be in the room with with. Elon Musk and, and Mark Zuckerberg, and you could be in the room with whoever, whoever, and you would still not want to, and you don't realize that you are in the room with Elon and, and Mark and whoever else because God has given you the space to ask. And you still say like, I don't know, they don't know me. If you ask them, they're going to know you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So say, ask, ask. In, faith. in faith. The Bible says, whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Amen. Amen. So I don't know what you're going to do when you leave here today. I just want to encourage you. Somebody ought to say, I'm getting ready to ask. I'm going home, I'm getting my, pad, my pencil out, I'm getting my paper out, I'm going, I'm going to the notes section in, in my phone, and I'm getting ready to line it all out. I'm getting ready to line it out from the money that I need, the health that I need, the family that I need. I'm getting ready to line it out from the car that I need. I'm getting ready to line it out to the appliances that I need. I'm getting ready to line it out to the mental health that I need, the attitude adjustment that I need. I need a lot of stuff, and so I'm going to have stuff on the front page, the back page. I'm going to have another page because God said, all I want you to do is to just ask me. That's it. I don't know about you. I got a lot of needs. But he's a supplier. The only thing is you got to ask. You're going to have to wake up this part of you to say, I'm not embarrassed. I don't have too much pride or too much vanity where I can't ask. 
This ain't scripture, but my mama used to say that a closed mouth. <laughs> You're going to have to ask. So that, that, just so you know, when you get home, that's Betty chapter 1, verse 1. <laughs> if you need something, you just ask. I remember when we first got married and we didn't have a lot of money. And, and Charsha, who was, she had just mature and used to working things out on her own, the first little financial crisis we hit as a couple, I'm like, I'm getting ready to ask my. She's like, we can handle this. I'm like, why do we got to handle it? I'm going to go home. I ask my mama. <laughs> I better go. I, I... <laughs> Say, ask in faith. <laughs> that was my first point. And let me tell you this. Uh, before, before you do it, because the Lord had, had cautioned me about this not too long ago, because he says he wants us to ask, but he wants us to ask with adoration with him. And he took me back to the same scripture when the disciples asked Jesus to pray. They said, teach us to pray, and he said, pray after this matter, meaning this is the model prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So God says when you come to him with your pad and pencil and your big list, don't forget to give him adoration first. The, the model prayer is laid out in different parts, and the first thing is we hallow his name. So, so when you come with your petition, because he says, I want you to ask, but he says, when you come to me, you need to tell me how great I am, and you need to tell me how awesome I am. So, so now when I go into the Lord's presence, I'm always quick to say, you are such a great God. I am just so in awe of you, and so I just feel blessed to be in your presence. And I'm like Moses. I just want to take my shoes off before you because I know I'm in the presence of holiness because there's nobody like you, God. That there's no one like you. I just feel fortunate that you have called me your own. I feel fortunate that you made me part of the family. You are awesome. I, I just want to blow kisses to you. I just, I just because, because had it not been for you on my side, I just don't know where I would be. And so I, I just thank God for being able to be in your presence. And David said, one thing I desired, and that will I seek. I'll just want to be in the house of the Lord forever. If I could just, boy, you better stop. If I could just be a doorkeeper on the gates, that, that would be enough for me. And when I'm doing that, I feel such a refreshing until sometimes I almost forgot, but I'm like, no, it's still here. So, so now that I've got that taken care of, God, here's my list. And to be honest, sometimes I have given God adoration and admiration, and there are sometimes I get up, and I didn't even, because what he gave me was so filling until I'm like, oh, well, I'll talk to you about that later, because I already know that with this communion that we just had, now don't get me wrong, I'm coming back to ask, because you said ask. But I just want to kind of ride out this communion that I've had with you. Say, ask in faith. And then we seek with focus. Say, seek with focus. Luke chapter 9, the Bible says this, verse 9. It says, I say unto you, ask and it shall be given. It says, seek and you shall find. Whatever you're looking for. If you seek, you'll find. It says, and it shall be opened unto you. And so seek comes from the Greek word, a tale, and it means to seek, to search for by inquiry, desire, demand, to investigate. It means to discover. And this is the beauty of Scripture, because as you're asking things from God, God also wants you to be seeking things. They go hand in hand. I don't want to talk to me. Have you ever lost some money? If you lost $20, the first thing you're going to say is, hmm, I've lost $20. I wonder, that's the question, I wonder where my $20 is. 
And then at some point in time, you're going to start seeking. You're going to go to that pair of jeans you had on yesterday. You're going to go to the dirty clothes hamper. You're going to go if, in your wife's purse without her knowing that you're looking for the $20. You're, you're going to look in the car. You're going to look under the seat. While you have asked, where's my money, you're also seeking. And this is the beautiful thing about seeking because really in this base form, it means to discover. And we think we're discovering more about God, but actually we're discovering more about us. Because if you lost $20 and you had to go to the old pair of jeans and then you had to go to the dirty clothes hamper, then you had to go to the car, and then you had to go to wherever, wherever, wherever to find the $20, that's telling you something about you. So when we go to God with our list, he says, ask, and then he says, seek. So as we're seeking God, we're also discovering more about him and ourselves. Because some people will say this, I don't know if you ever lost your, your keys. Like, I'm getting a hook because I ain't never losing my keys again. If you've ever lost a credit card, you'll say, I'll never be in such a hurry that I pay something and I don't remember where I put my credit card. I don't care if there's six people behind me in the fast food line. I'm getting ready to get my card back, put it right back where it came from, because I don't want 30 minutes later to find out where's my card. Because you're discovering you on this journey of discovering him. Search by inquiry and to desire. And finally, you get to the bottom of the matter. The matter is not just God. The matter is you. Why do you do what you do when you do what you do? Ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and you'll find. And when you seek, you'll begin to find everything that God wants you to know about him and about you. See, we're all on a journey to seek him. But when we seek him, we find out more about us. Amen. Amen. The Bible says this in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. It says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. As you seek God, you find out more about yourself. If you seek God in his righteousness, right, his right way of doing things, then you begin to realize your wrong way of doing things. So, so when you come across Scripture, and the Bible says that we should prioritize God, but you have prioritized everybody else but God, then when you seek him, you're also discovering you. Does this make sense? When the Scripture says to honor your mother and father, that you'll have a blessing, that's the first commandment with promise, and you ain't called your mama in two, five, six years, you're learning something about you. You're learning that your heart is so hard and what happened in the past still controls you to this day. Not realizing somebody wished they had a mama. And someone wishes that they knew their mother. There are people who have been adopted and people who have been dropped off at the fire station. As you seek him, his right way of doing things. Notice this. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Don't seek money. Don't seek people. Don't seek the bank loan. Don't seek. He says, seek God first. Just ask. Seek him. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 55, it says, seek you, Lord, while he may be. Call on him while he's near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts to let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. Because as you begin to realize more things about you, there are more things you need to confess and repent and put under the blood on your journey. 
Some people are like, okay, let's just go back to the time of service where we were just, just worshiping the Lord. No, 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 this is part of it too. This is part of it. Say, ask in faith. Say, seek with focus. Last point is knock with fervor. Say, knock with fervor. Fervor means to be intense. It means to have some passion. It actually means to be boiling. So, so if you're asking from God, you just don't do this. No, 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 because if the door doesn't open, and then you might get more intense about it, like, you know, because we started off by saying there was a guy who went to his friend's house at, at midnight and said, I got some company coming, and I need some loaves of bread. And, and the guy said, I'm sorry, we're sleeping here. So you know what he did? How many know that sometimes you can bug people into a blessing? Y'all don't want to talk to me. So, so maybe, maybe you hadn't been down that road, but I've become a pest. If it's something that I really want, oh, I'll, I'll call, I'll call, I'll speak to the frontline people, I'll speak to the manager, I'll write a letter to the company, I'll write a letter to the email, and, and I've gotten a lot better because it's not bad. It's just, I'm just trying to, because I'm just, I'm knocking, right? And pretty soon I'll have somebody call me back saying, hey, my name is so-and-so and this is my title and I heard that you had a question about this, that, and the other, blah, blah, blah. But it wouldn't have happened unless you knock. <laughs> Amen. God has opened doors for us, but don't forfeit it because you don't knock. Well, that's going to be too hard. You need to keep knocking. People aren't going to understand what I'm wanting them to do. You just still need to keep knocking. I don't know if I really, really apply for that job. Well, let them tell you. You just keep, you just keep knocking. I, I don't know how this is going to work out. I need another car. I need to go in. But they may deny me. Well, let them deny you. But you just need to keep knocking. Amen. And, and notice, we ask and we seek. And we knock. And so as we go from asking to seeking, the intensity picks up. And as we go from seeking to knocking, the intensity picks up. It doesn't, it, the, the intensity doesn't decrease, it increases. That's for the bulldog people. You're like, oh, I'm not going to let this go. The man of God said, I'm not going to let go until you bless me. So, so we're going to wrestle all night long until you bless me. I'm going to knock all night long. God, God you on the main line. I'm getting ready to wear this number out. I'm getting ready to number out. I'm just going to have it on redial. Remember back when we had old phones and you trying to call into the radio station to win the prize and you just... <laughs> you call to get a busy signal. You hang up and call right Turn to your neighbor and say, what's wrong with you? <laughs> this is what I know about people. Anything you really want? Anything you really, really, really want? You're like, hey, 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 my name is Randy. She's like, I don't care. I ain't got time for you. Anything I really want? Next time is, hey, my name is Randy, and here's a rose. <laughs> Next time is, hey, my name is Randy, here's a rose, and we're going out to dinner. If, I mean, because anything you really want, you're going to keep knocking. Your, your hands may get blistered, and you might have blood and whatever it takes, but you've got to keep knocking. Turn to your neighbor and say, don't quit. <laughs> because if you knock, and you knock long enough, the door will be opened. The door will be opened. Here's the secret. Even if people didn't want to open the door, if you keep knocking to heaven long enough, I have seen God change the hearts and minds of people who were behind the door that did not want to open the door for you. They didn't want you to succeed, but there, something came over them. They don't know what it was, but they found themselves opening the door for the person that they said, I'll never open this door for. 
And that's how you know it wasn't them. You just kept knocking on the door. We started off by talking about the greatness of God because he's the one that controls hearts and minds and circumstances and situations. And I've, I've had bad supervisors and I've worked with people who really didn't like me and people who talked about me. And so that's part of life. So I would pray, God, just bless them. And then I started saying, God, give them some business so they'll stay out of my business. And, and then on Monday morning, they'd be like, man, you just wouldn't believe what happened. My son was doing this, and my daughter was doing this, and this, that, and the other. And I was praying for him, but I'm being honest, at the same time, I was like, mm. Because if people have their own business, they don't have time for your business anymore. I became less important. And that's one of the keys to the success that God has given me. I've always just been able to fly under the radar. You go in some place, you got on shorts and flip-flops and this, that, and the other, and people treat you like, like, like they see you. You're like, bad for them. Say ask. ask, say seek, seek. say knock. knock. At the end of the day, God wants you to keep asking. I've grown up in Christianity my entire life. My parents are pastors and they're still pastors. And I've seen healing movements and I've seen the word of faith movement, and I, I, I've seen uh, parts of Azusa. And the reason I say this is because sometimes I've heard it said that if you ask, then you don't have to ask again. If you believe what you asked for the first time. I'm here to tell you, you should ask as often as you think you need to ask. Because some of us, we ask once, and then from there, we just thank God for doing what we already asked him to do because we know that if we ask anything, he hears us. For some people, if you ask and then circumstances come and they change your mind about what you just asked for, then you might need to ask again because there's nothing wrong with asking again. Is this making sense? And so, I mean, I don't know if you've ever had kids and you told them you're going to take them to McDonald's and you pass McDonald's. And then the child will ask you, Mama, I thought we was going to McDonald's, right? And you're like, we're going there, and then if you pass another McDonald's, they're going to ask you again. And heaven help you if you pass the third McDonald's, because they're knocking from that back seat. They're knocking. And whether you love them or they just got on your nerves, you're like, we're getting ready to pull on in. We're getting ready to pull on in. What do you want? We'll stand on our feet. Ask. Just ask. Nothing more, nothing less. Just ask. Don't be intimidated. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be so full of pride. Just ask. At the end of the day, God may say, no, I don't want you to have that right now. You're not ready for it right now. Or he may say, this is the perfect time for you to have what you are asking for. I'm so glad you asked me for it. Just ask. Just ask. Just ask. He already knows everything that you have need of. Before you ask. When my kids were 9 and 10 and 11, and I, I was working with a, a guy, and the first time I met him was in 2001. I'm showing my age. And he had this car, and I'm like, man, I like that car. It was a really nice um, leather interior. It was a Toyota. And I'm like, I really like that car. And it was... 15, 16 years later, he was getting ready to get rid of that car, and he asked me about it. 
But what he didn't know is that my kids were getting older and I was already thinking about a used car for them. See, sometimes, how many know, any parent knows when your child gets to be 14, 15, they, they know, parents know you're going to be asking for me for something that's coming up pretty soon, as soon as you get your license. And I already had the knowledge of what I thought they were going to ask for before they even came and asked me. And I was already working out the answer even before they had asked the question. God already has an answer even before you ask the question. But he still says, I want you to ask. This morning, I'm encouraging you, admonishing you to ask. What do you really want from God? Some of you, if God came and asked you right now, what do you want? You don't know. I, you need to have your top five list. This is what I need right now, God. Whether it's marriage, healing, family, whatever the case may be, this is what I need and I'm asking you in faith. When I left the house this morning, I told Tarsha, I said, I, I feel like, the Lord may want us to pray for people this morning. I didn't know that God was going to do everything that he did this morning. And that's why I was alluding to that God could do more for you than anything that I could say. I'm going to lead us in a general prayer. Amen. I'll lead us in a prayer of salvation if you want. Because uh, I really felt like, um, can I just tell you, like, some of the things sometimes God will talk to me. I wanted to pray with people who are in need of healing. You got heart issues? I want to pray with you this morning. You've been going back and forth to the doctor? I want to pray with you this morning. The Bible says we just, we just ask. If you don't know Jesus this morning, just lift your hand because I want to lead you in a simple prayer this morning. If you don't know him, lift up your hand high because I want to lead you in a simple prayer because I want you to know him by the time you leave here today. I see hands, so just repeat after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come as a sinner in need of a Savior. Father, come into my life and be my Lord. I repent of all of my sins. I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, and I make my confession known this morning that Jesus Christ is Lord. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Give God some hand praise for that. Hey, we want to thank you for watching our broadcast today. We hope that something was said that would give you encouragement, something that will help you strengthen your walk with Jesus Christ. Our goal is to cover the entire earth with the knowledge of Jesus Christ. If this message has been a blessing to you, just let us know. Leave us a comment in the line. Give us a thumbs up. And so until the next time, God bless you.